Hello everybody and welcome to the Fate Collide Liner Prisma Ilia The Movie Oath Under Snow uh, review and that definitely took only one take first try. I didn't have to read it off or anything, I just got the name of the movie memorised. No, I was reading it off the Wikipedia page because it's a long, uh, it's long basically. So uh, this was the last bit of Fate I had to watch out of what's out now and uh, it's a pretty good place to stop. Am I, and I, I only pretty good place to stop. That wasn't the best, but it was still pretty darn good. First thing, first thing to note is the way I'm going to do this. I'm going to talk to, without spoilers first of all. So if you haven't seen it, you're like, man, should I watch that? Uh, I'll go without spoilers, and then you know, halfway through or whatever, I'll probably less than halfway through. I think I'm going to talk about spoilers more, but be a bit of that without as well. So first thing to note is this is. This, despite the fact that Ilya's name's in the title, she's in it for way less than five minutes. Like, she's barely in it. This is a pre. It's kind of a pre. It's a prequel in this. Yeah, it's a prequel. Okay, you know, it's a prequel. Yeah, it's set before the first one because the end of this one is the beginning of the first season. But you shouldn't watch this first. You should watch all the seasons and then watch this. Is what I think. But, uh, yeah, Shiro is the main character of this, but it's not Fate Stay Night Shiro. It's not Ilyaverse Shiro. It's, uh, I don't know what we're calling this this universe, Miiverse, the Miiverse Shiro. And the thing about Shiro, just in general, he's an interesting character because he can be so many things based on his choices. So, like, you know, you've got you know, you're this one who's badass, and then you've got, like, the one in the Ilyaverse who is just a cool... Ch not cool, but he's a chill, chill guy. He's like just a normal guy. So like, he's interesting because he can be so many things. And this, this one is interesting. This one, this show is very interesting. But uh, I'll get more into that in spoilers because I can't really say why without, without spoiling. Uh, the one of the other things I really enjoy. I enjoyed like the early first. I'm gonna say like 20 minutes or so where it's just Shiro and Miu like bonding, like just playing like footy. Like, that's quite footy, it's football, or soccer. Uh, yeah, that was, I liked that. That was just, yeah, you know, good. I'd, I'd immediately make it, like, relatable and just like, oh, man, they're good, they're cool, they're good siblings. But, uh, yeah, uh, but then around the middle part, things get serious. And, well, let's, when things first start going bad, it's kind of weird, because it happens really quickly of just, like, now things are bad. I'm really glad I got that click first try, by the way. But yeah, things go bad. And uh, it's like, okay, five minutes ago, they were just chilling. I guess that does show, it's just like, oh, it's gone bad so quick. And yes, there was a little bit of build up, but uh, you know, it was, it was, it was, it was, it was a bit out of nowhere, but I did still, it didn't take away or anything, but it's just an observation. Uh, oh, there's also probably the weakest part of the movie is there's a, a short montage around a bit over halfway through and it's like I, don't, I feel like there was a lot more there in the manga and it just got had to get cut because movie but maybe I'm wrong but I feel like they could have made that like 10-15 minutes longer and like expand on that part but maybe that would have you know took away from you know the main storyline if they had like this little sub story in the middle of it but that's probably the weakest part of the of the movie uh, uh, just quick like admin things looks good sounds good like sound effects and mu music good L like looks good there's no like it's not like the amazing movie quality like it's not like heaven's feel or anything like that but it, it still looks I still think it looks solid but uh I think that's where I'm gonna end I guess I'd give it a 7 out of 10 I should probably say if we're being yeah I don't know if I liked it as much as uh, 3 Ray and that's how you pronounce it 3 Ray not Dre or yeah, three, three, three Ray, and uh, yeah. So that's what I thought. And now I'm gonna pause quickly. And by pause, I mean I'm just gonna be quiet for about five, two seconds, and uh, start spoilers. So if you're leaving now, bye bye. I'll see you in another video. Subscribe and all that, and uh, bye. Okay, that was less than two seconds, but uh, it's it's fine. So spoiler rise. Why why did they kill Sakura? Like. Was it just to make sure? I guess it was because he had to lose everything, this version of Shiro. But I don't even like Sakura, 
but like she was I haven't seen Heaven's Feel first of all so don't you know I don't know maybe she's really good in that but uh yeah I don't I, don't, I was like oh cool Sakura's here and then she got killed and I was a bit confused because she kind of in 3-ray but she's like an evil like they didn't really explain how that happened but you know I'm um, uh, there's another season, so I guess there's still time for, to, for explanation. I think that there's the last, next season is the last one, but I'm not. They haven't confirmed that, but from the way it's spaced, I would imagine. Uh, so best part of the movie is easily Shiro, and like using the Emiya card basically. It's like he's using the card of himself. I'm like, it's really cool. I like that. I like that a lot. I think he like traces a fake card, and like makes a real one, but he can only do it with himself because I think that's how they did it I'm not I don't claim to be an expert on fate I don't think anybody can claim that even people that claim they are are not experts you know it's it's very complicated but uh it was just cool and like like I said I really enjoy this Shiro chooses instead to try and you know hero of justice save everyone he's like no I can't do that I'm just gonna save Miu like I I actually kind of enjoyed that like it makes him different from like Fate Stay Night Shiro for instance which you know they're, they're these two are more similar than like Ilya versus Shiro but it's it's it is interesting and it gives him this version even though we knew he was cool already from 3-ray but then he's like yeah I'm he's kind of turning into Archer I should just call Emmy Archer it makes it easier uh at the near towards the end like his hair started going white his skin started changing color and I'm like, oh, so that's why... I think I read somewhere that it's the more magic he uses, the more he, like... Because, obviously, if you put Shiro and Archer side by side, they'd look nothing alike, really. So I think I read somewhere that the reason his skin gets darker and his hair goes white is because of the magic he's using. So it just kind of, like... You know, it amps up that he's using a lot in this in this short amount of time. It does... I, like, I, I, I want to say this movie isn't just the Shiro show... But it kind of is, because obviously Miu can't get her, her character development yet, because that's all in the future, you know, in the, the series that we've already seen. And then, like, the villains, we already know all their motives, and, like, they've done their whole, the whole you know, we're trying to protect the world bit. Like, they did that more in 3-Ray, so we can't really... It does make sense. It makes sense that he gets most of the character development, but it would be nice if more people did. Also, maybe Sakura. They could have done more with her, like not kill her off. I, I, I just confused. Um, yeah, and also someone else shows up. That's the other thing I was going to mention. It feels like a lot of the, like the rest of the Ainsworths just kind of show up, except that one that doesn't show up. Like the, the little girl, is there. Uh, Erica. She's just she's there for like two scenes, and it's. It's kind of a little bit like, okay, why were you there at all, really? I'm sure there is a reason, and uh, I haven't read the manga, so don't don't be mad at me. And uh, if it's in the anime, then it's then it's my fault. Then you're allowed to be mad at me. But yeah, I know I've, it seems like I'm complaining a lot, but I actually really liked it. It's just like it was good. Like I don't have there was, it didn't do anything amazingly well. I also I don't know if this was a just an, because the animation studio was different, or if this was just a deliberate touch. But um, this Shiro's version of Unlimited Blade Works seemed to be more snowy, because like obviously this world is more snowy. So if that was deliberate, that was I really like that touch. But if it was just because the studio was different, then I can't really give them credit. But I would like to give them credit, so I'm gonna say it was deliberate. But uh, yeah, this was. I mean, it's got me excited for the next season of a magical girl show. I don't watch magical girl shows ever, but I watched this because it was fate, and I'm like, this is good. So. You know, I mean, it's probably not the same as, you know, every other Magical Girl show, but I am, I'm, I'm very happy with this movie. Uh, like I said, probably about a 7 out of 10, which most people would be like, that's terrible. 7 out of 10 is, is good, man. 5, five is average, 7 out of 10 is really good. Uh, but yeah, so I will, make sure you subscribe, first of all, for more good reviews of other stuff. I do weekly anime reviews, I do movie reviews sometimes. I'm doing a lot of them recently, so there's probably going to be a 6 month gap in between. Like, I'll do seven all at once. I don't know what I'm talking about. But yeah, do all that stuff. And uh, I will see you next time in whatever video you decide to watch next. Bye, guys.